Hello and welcome to the Meraki Scrapbooker Social, the first ever Crafty Meraki virtual retreat. My name is Lynn and I have the honor and pleasure of being the first to wish you a happy National Scrapbooking Day on behalf of Bindu and everyone here at Crafty Meraki. Thank you so much for joining us, whether you are catching this live or on the replay. We have an exciting day of crafting ahead of us. But before we get started, I hope you'll do me the favor of liking this video and sharing it out to your socials so more crafters can join the fun. There will be a total of five instructors who will share scrapbooking tips, techniques, and inspiration. These workshops have been pre-recorded in real time so you can follow along and create as you watch. Our instructors are in the live chat, so if you are watching live, please say hello and let us know where you are watching from. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the live chat or in the comments if you are watching the replay. Our instructors will do their best to answer you. Today's workshops are divided into a morning session and an afternoon session with a one hour break in between. This is the morning session, and when it ends, it will automatically redirect you to the afternoon session so you won't miss a thing. Our instructors are crafting with the exclusive retreat bundle, specially curated by Bindu for our retreat today. However, if you haven't picked up or received your kit, feel free to craft along with what you have in your stash. If you prefer, you can sit back, watch these workshops and chat along with our fabulous community because the virtual retreat will be available on replay here on the Crafty Meragi YouTube channel. That way you can come back and watch them again anytime you wish. I hope you'll take what you see here today as inspiration for your next paper crafting project. From scrapbooking to card making to home decor, so many of the ideas and products shared by our instructors can be used in a variety of different types of projects. Without further ado, let's get started. Hello everyone! Welcome to Crafty Meraki's Scrapbooker Social. My name is Sarah, Sarah Scraps on most uh, social media, and I am bringing you your first two projects. So, we're going to start with our 6x6 six six card base. This was part of your homework and supplies to collect from your stash. I'm going to cut the bottom two inches of the front of the card off. Don't worry, we are going to go ahead and fill that up. We're going to create a fun decorative edge using the Affluent Heart Dies. So open that card base up all the way and then you're going to take whatever kind of black spray or a Bladder you chose. I am using Chroma Mist from Brutus Monroe in the Angel of Music color. So this Angel of Music color is, is black ink, but then it also has some gold in it. Absolutely beautiful and perfect to add a little bit of interest and a little pop of black to the back of our card. So my projects today 
my idea or my theme of my workshop was simply elegant projects. So elegance is kind of my scrapbooking style. I love when things are kind of soft, maybe a little dramatic, but ultimately very, very elegant. So I have a piece of scrap paper and I'm just kind of masking off the top portion of my card. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to get any of the splatter across on the back. So I'm just opening up that mist, taking my scissors and giving this card background a very generous, generous splatter. You can see here lots of splatter. We're going to cover a lot of this up and we want to make sure that it is part of our project. So I am going to just very generously splatter this down and then remove my mask. Go ahead and set that aside. Let it dry. We're going to work on some other elements for our card and then uh, by the time we're finished it should come back. It could should be um, ready to go. I um, also am keeping a baby wipe nearby. We are getting with both of our projects today we're going to do a little bit of messy. Just a little bit. And so I wanted to keep uh keep ink and other things off of my glass board. So part of your homework was to cut all of these beautiful hearts from the Affluent Heart Die. You can see here I have both white hearts and from the Color Cascade pattern paper. So what we're going to do with these hearts is we want to make some substantial stable hearts. We're going to use these hearts at the bottom of where we cut off our card base. So we want to definitely make sure that these hearts are stable enough that they can hold our card open because they're going to act as how we're going to hold our card open. So I'm layering my pattern paper heart on top of one of the thick cardstock hearts. And that's going to give us a double layer to be able to and keep the stability on our card. So the three hearts, the largest one and the two medium ones, those are going to be attached at the bottom of the card. And then the other two, I did cut them out of white cardstock as well, and I am going to layer them up. But that's actually just for a little bit more dimension, not so much um, for stability. So I'm just going to continue on here while I put these hearts together, while you put your hearts together, if you are working along with us, we will discuss some of the things that you will see in my video today. So some of the kind of elegant details that I enjoy placing on my projects is a little bit of a pop of black, a beautiful kind of doodly or hand-drawn appeal or elements. We're going to do some hand drawing and some doodling elements and those are going to be so easy. Anyone can do them. I absolutely promise. And then we're also going to create what I like to call a gallery wall design for our layout. So these little hearts are going to be hanging hearts. They're going to be hanging on our card almost like they're coming down from the top of our card. The next thing I want to do is to go through this effortless artistry paper collection. And I'm looking at all the different colors that we have here and I'm looking for the one that's gonna match my hearts the best. Now in your case, depending on what pattern you chose to die cut your hearts out of, then I will you might choose another pattern. There are loads and loads of colors. I'm showing you some here. There are so many colors of these uh, tulips in this collection. You, no matter what pattern paper you cut your hearts from, you should be able to find an awesome match. In addition to die cutting some of these flowers, I'm also gonna go ahead and die cut a sentiment from 
these patterns. You could, again, choose any sentiment you like. There are loads and loads and loads and loads of sentiments on each of these pieces of paper. So what I did was I cut the flowers and I cut the sentiment I wanted for this card, but then when I was finished creating, I went back and grabbed these sentiments and grabbed um, the dies and I cut all the sentiments on the page out and then I just slipped them in with the dies. So next time I wanna create any kind of cards, I have all these sentiments already cut, ready to go, ready for me to use. And you can see how lovely they fit right there. So I'm gonna die cut four flowers and one of the sentiments. We're gonna use these four flowers in a really unique kind of fun way. I'm just gonna take some of my tarot tape and kind of pop them on there. I think that these EAP products, these paper pads from Crafty Meraki are so, so cool. Even if you have never made a card in your life, if you have one of these pads and the coordinating dies, you will be able to make cards in any color scheme you want forever. Like super simple cards. These would make fabulous handmade gifts. Um, I just, I think it's a really, really cool, unique, totally different product. I've never seen anything quite like this. And there are quite a few different styles with different sentiments and different elements. I know there are some paper pads that have like cute critters already colored for you, ready to go, so you don't have to color anything. You don't have to invest in markers of any kind, and you will just have these beautiful elements. These flowers are absolutely stunning. They're tulips. I believe they look like tulips. And they come in all different colors. There's some orange ones and some yellow ones and some pink ones. And they're also colored in different styles. So in this case, I pulled the ones that were primarily pink and yellow and had this had that kind of elegant feel to them. But there are other ones that are a little more sketchy. There are some that um, are a bit more whimsical. There are some that are a bit more like true to life kind of. Um, colors and just such a cool product like such a cool product uh, so I am going to grab my mini Anna Griffin machine here I'm using my mini Empress today for my die cut machine and I'm just going to go ahead and get all, all four of the flowers and the um, sentiment cut and this will go real quick quick and easy and then once we have these die cut pieces cut we can go ahead and create and add little details to the hearts I am a big detail person such a detail person I love um I love little details things like sequins the pretty gems that were in uh, the kits, all of those beautiful small little touches. So I really love the hearts, the affluent hearts die, but I wanted to add again those little details. What can I do to these hearts once I've die cut them? What else can I do to them to make them special, to make them my own, to add those little touches to them that uh, are going to make them special? I did die cut four of the tulip flowers, but you wouldn't need to. You really only needed, I really only needed three. I used all four of them, and you certainly could die cut and use all four of them as well, but should you not wanna do that, you can go ahead and um, just die cut three. If you are working from your stash, while I'm doing all this die cutting, you want to be fussy cutting some flowers. You need some larger flowers, flowers that maybe look like the ones here that will go with your pattern paper hearts. 
Um, and what that is going to do, because we are going to kind of decorate or add floral details to these hearts. Um, so you want to be able to add those floral details if you have some die cuts uh, that you don't uh, mind using or that coordinate with your paper. That would be a great option as well. If you have a stamp and you wanna be stamping some flowers and die cutting flowers while I'm done hiding these flowers. You could do that. Everything in my workshop today will work with your stash. It just might require you to get a little bit um, inventive or uh, kind of think a little bit out of the box. So this is going to be my last die cut piece, these last two flowers. These are really easy to line up. You see I got nice straight even margins. They were super easy to work with. And then once we have these four flowers all die cut and ready to go, we're going to add floral details to the edges of all of our hearts. So the biggest thing I can tell you is we're not gonna waste any of these flowers. I'm going to have them coming in off the edge or around the edge. They have a nice curve to them, which is going to be really useful as we work with them. But you'll see here, I'm putting them all along the one edge, pushing it down so I get a good, good, it's nicely adhered. And then I can just flip it over and I'm going to go ahead and trim off any excess that's hanging over the side but I'm not going to get rid of those edge pieces I'm going to take them and I'm going to kind of flip them around and have them coming in from different areas of the heart so maybe the cut side the end I think I had like teeny tiny little cut sides I couldn't use but you'll kind of see how I do this here where I can just take those cut sides pop them off the edge and have the florals coming in from different edges of the of the heart I think this is a really cool and different way to add a floral detail to a project um, put them around the edge of a uh, shape so I'm using hearts but if you look through your stash if you have um, could do hearts you could I think hearts work the best shape wise um but maybe maybe you have um a larger floral die cut that you'd want to use or just something like that um but I think for this card and my idea the uh, a good heart is a it would be a really nice thing and there you can see I'm adding my sentiment I'm going to grab some foam tape from my stash and I'm going to put foam tape on the sentiment to kind of pop it up and give it some separation from the back of the heart. And then I'm putting my tape runner across the bottom edge of our card, just across the bottom edge. I don't want to put tape runner or tape on the back of the hearts because part of the hearts are going to be hanging off this edge. One thing I will say, I sort of wish I had not adhered my scent a bit just yet because when I go to put the smaller hearts down I'm going to need uh, to kind of pull that sentiment up so if you want to hold off on adding your sentiment more towards the end of the process go for it I am using the grid to get my heart centered so I know I cut two inches off the bottom of that six by six card base so I want to make sure that I am at that it is that the heart is hanging two inches off so that it'll match up with the bottom of the card. And now I'm gonna go ahead and work on the other two hearts and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start by having one of those floral pieces kind of come in from the side of one of the hearts and then I'm going to cut off the excess and take that excess and reapply it to other areas of the heart. Wrong way to do this. Uh, just however you like it. When when you have, feel like the heart has um, the, that interesting floral detail on it, just go right ahead and call it done. And this is where I said because um, I'm I'm lining them up a little bit. 
I did have to kind of pull that sentiment up so I could tuck the other heart underneath it. So if you wanted to wait on that sentiment, you could. And what I'm doing now is I'm just lining that heart up on one side with the bottom of the big heart and then with the edge of the card base. And then I'm going to take this one. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to go ahead and just use that those leftover floral pieces. I'm going to decide where I like them. On my heart, I also kept the florals on these two hearts off to the right and left side because I knew they were going to overlap a little bit, the middle heart. And um, when I did the first one, I realized the second one would also kind of need to tuck underneath my sentiment, which I do really, really like. And it worked out just fine. Um, I have very forgiving foam tape. If your foam tape's a little less forgiving, you might have a maybe a harder time, but I, I really didn't have a hard time at all. And don't these hearts look beautiful? These do not need to be on a card. I think they would be beautiful as an embellishment on a layout. I think they would be beautiful with, um, you could kind of layer them, you, you know, put the flowers on top of the heart and then layer them kind of off behind some journaling so that your heart's kind of sneaking out from behind. You could have them have um, the flowers kind of on one side of your heart and then on the other side you could have your title that kind of goes off the edge of the heart. So many options. This is just a really great kind of cool idea to have to put away into your little idea bin for next time you want to add something a little bit different or a little bit unique to a scrapbook layout. So again, I'm taking that heart, I'm lining it up with the bottom of the card and with the edge of the card. And now you can see why we cut off those two inches from the bottom of our card base. We cut it off those two inches because our card now has this kind of cool, fun edge. Here's where I'm going to take just a little bit more foam tape and I'm just going to tuck it underneath my sentiment to make sure that it's nice and stable and that it's going to stay where I put it. It felt like it was kind of that little piece, the little T was kind of floating up and I didn't want it to do that. So Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take those two extra hearts and I'm going to just choose a place for them. Now, my design idea for this is that these hearts are going to be hanging by threads from the crease at the top of our card. So, I want to make sure that where the hearts meet in the middle, I have um, enough clearance above them to be able to draw or doodle those threads, which we're going to do in a minute. I'm also kind of realizing at this point that I have an extra cluster of flowers, which is a-okay. And my last two hearts are really small, so we're only going to need one of these clusters to do both of the floral details on the two hearts, our last two hearts. And then that fourth one, I'm actually going to go ahead and just adhere it to the inside of the card for a little bit of decor inside the card, and then I can kind of weave my message around the little curve that this floral cluster uh, just naturally makes. I just love how colorful these hearts turned out and how gorgeous they are. I think that the retreat and the add-on kit, and I think that they're, the kits are jam-packed full. I would definitely recommend if you have a kit uh, to go ahead and hit the subscribe button over on my YouTube channel because I'm going to be using my kit all summer and I'm determined to use a large chunk of it, if not all of it. I think it's beautiful and I think there's so much you can do with it. And I feel like uh, this event is kind of the kickoff to me using this kit just all summer long. And um, I'd love to have you come and join me. So once I have decided I like where those two hearts are, I'm going to go ahead and adhere them down with my tape runner. 
by this time all of that background is dry but double check and make sure depending on what black ink spray or watercolor paint or depending on the medium that you chose for your um, black splatter it may or may not be dry and I want to make so just be very careful and make sure before you start it hearing everything down that it is dry Mine drew, uh, got dry pretty fast. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my T-square ruler. Line up your T-square ruler with the top of your card and then place the T-square ruler right up against the part of the heart that they kind of meet together. And then I'm taking a black gel pen and I'm just drawing a line. This can be a thick line, it can be a thin line. You can, you know, go over it we want it to look like threads so if you think about what threads look like that's um kind of the look that you get when you just take a black gel pen and kind of go back and forth a couple times up against that t-square ruler and then we will have our threads that are going to hold our little hearts in place and if you're looking at something and you feel like it's a little too thin or a little too thick, you can come in again and kind of just go over it one more time. And then where the hearts are attached there, I'm just gonna draw two little bumps. And those are going to look very much like little threads or a little knot that is holding our hearts in place. Super easy to do this. Do not be intimidated by adding some doodled detail to your projects. We're gonna add doodled detail to our layout today too. And we're gonna add detail that's gonna look quite similar to this detail. So we're just gonna, and then I'm adding, after I have those little um, kind of knots or loops drawn, I'm just adding a little bit of um, kind of string that's gonna go off there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do the two smaller hearts. Now you'll see I'm being careful with this placement because I want you to be able to see all five of the little threads as separate pieces. I don't want to have any of the little threads kind of overlapping. So I'm making sure that the thread that's kind of behind the smaller heart is off to one side. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just thickening up some of these a little bit. Depending on your pen, um, you may or may not wanna go ahead and thicken your lines up a little bit. That would be completely up to you, completely up to what you like. You could actually completely skip the two top hearts and the thread and just have that mixed that splattery background behind your card as well there's no wrong way definitely you know do what feels right to you do what you like and um enjoy the process so again just getting my doodles into place here and then you can see here I'm doing it again making sure I'm not that I'm not going to have overlapping kind of strings and whereas the larger heart was sort of more towards the top towards the fold of the card my smaller heart is going to be is going to come down a little bit lower so that everything's at a different level and that's going to give us this cute kind of look like these decorated hearts are um, kind of hanging from the top of a card. There's that little extra flower. I tucked it on the inside and you can see here how the card stands up. Now, now my mat is glass, so <laughs> it will stand up a little bit easier, not on a glass surface. I'm gonna go ahead now and we're gonna add some gems to the card. I am adding three gems to each heart and I'm choosing an edge, like an edge where there are no flowers and I'm adding three gems in a row for a bit, for some accent. I went with the largest gems that are in the mix. 
I'm using Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive because that is my personal favorite wet glue, but whatever your favorite wet glue is, that's what you wanna use. I like that it dries completely invisible. It holds things really, really well. Uh, I'm, again, I think I said this already, I'm using the largest of the gems to create a little bit of a bigger impact. And I have a crystal katana because I use sequins and gems on just about every single thing that I make. I don't think that any project I make gets doesn't get bejeweled with sequins or with something. I love that little extra sparkle and texture. Um, so sequins, gems. I guess sometimes I use some of the Nuvo drops or um, maybe glossy accents, but for the most part, I'm going to say a good 98% of what I make includes gems. So I have a crystal katana and I love it. It helps me to pick everything up. Now I did have trouble. These gems, they were kind of staticky and they were also trying to flip upside down no matter what I did. So I did end up kind of having to um, pull them out of my the little triangle dish. I love those triangle dishes. They keep everything together, but for this, they were they were being a little temperamental. So I hope you have enjoyed this first project. We're gonna move on to a uh, 12 by 12 scrapbook layout now and we're going to talk about gallery matting we're going to do some more doodling we're definitely going to add some more little pops of black and we're going to be um, working on that coming up right now so if you want to kind of set your card away let all that glue dry Bring the next set of supplies from your homework in, and we're going to go ahead and get we're started do right for our away. 12 by 12 layout is going to show you a little trick to gallery mat a 4 by 6 photo. So what gallery matting does for a photo is it gives it a pop. It makes it the center of your layout. And in this case, I want this beautiful photo to be the center of my layout. So I have a four by six photo and I printed that photo with a white border. My first pattern paper, I'm gonna cut at four and a quarter by six and a quarter. The photo we are using today is a heritage photo. It is a picture of my great, great grandparents. So those are my relatives in that picture. <laughs> I actually, and I actually have the original picture. So I started with one of the papers from the, the Retro Blooms paper pad, and you can use any patterns from that paper pad that you like. They all mix and match perfectly. From my black cardstock, I'm cutting a rectangle that is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. This is going to give our page and our photo this kind of wide black mat again that beautiful pop of black is going to just help us to create something that is elegant and formal but at the same time quite simple nothing is hard in this workshop everything i've created for you today are things that you can easily create with any supplies that you have the third mat for our picture is from another pattern paper and it is five by seven. So we now have gone from having a four by six photo to a five by seven photo that has this beautiful matting to give it some pop and to make it be the star of our page. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna layer these mats up they should layer up really simply. Uh, and again, you can use any pattern from that Retro Blooms pattern paper you want, or you could use any pattern from any six by eight paper pad that you have in your stash. Now, 
You could even use scraps from 12 by 12 paper if you want. I am using a sheet of white cardstock for my background today. But let me just say, if you know that you have a really amazing wood grain or a really amazing um, kind of tone on tone or older looking paper, this would look gorgeous with a patterned paper background, not just the white cardstock. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at our layout as we pull it all together. So there is our photo ready to go and matted. Now we're gonna bring in all of those elements that were part of your homework to cut. So the circles, the dies, the squares, all of those things, we're gonna bring them in and start to use them. And then you can see off to the side, I have die cut all of those floral pieces from the wreath paper from white cardstock. We're gonna use those too. I'm gonna to use my T-square ruler because I want to get my photograph centered. It's not my strong suit. I'm not very good at math at all, but I did my very best using my trusty ruler to get my photograph as centered as possible. Now, as I place my other elements here, I'm going to talk a little bit. I did create a sketch for this layout. So if you at any point, you're not sure where something goes or where to place things or you need some help, I do have that resource available to you. I'm not sure if it will be on the workshop page or I may just um, post it after the workshop in Crafty Meraki's Facebook group uh, so that you can get it. But I will make sure that you have the ability to access it if you would like. So the two circles and that larger slimline piece, we're gonna leave those just the pattern paper. These squares that you cut for your homework, we're gonna layer behind the squares the black cardstock squares. That's gonna frame out these elements on this page. And again, I just think that adding that little touch of black brings such elegance to a layout. And it really just adds that bit of contrast and kind of like lovely extra. Another thing is, so the whole idea for this page design, the whole idea of this layout is the idea of a gallery wall. So if you think about how you would kind of hang your pictures or your um, frames or different elements, and you would kind of, kind of puzzle piece them all together to create a collage on a wall, we are gonna do that. We are creating a collage on our scrapbook page. So it doesn't have to be completely symmetrical. Uh, it doesn't have to be, um, it should be balanced, but it can be also a little asymmetrical, a little bit different than maybe what you're used to. The slimline die, I cut it from a light pattern paper because I wanna put my journaling on that. So I'm not gonna do my journaling on camera. Um, when I was finished with the layout, everything was done. I used my T-square ruler and that, my gel pen. I drew some lines and onto that light colored green pattern paper and then added my journaling there. All the pattern papers mounted to their black coordinating squares. I'm gonna fidget with them a little bit. Fidgeting is kind of what I do. I am gonna make sure that they are where I want them. And again, I did make a sketch for you. So if you lose track of where different things go on this layout, I have a little road map that I'm gonna share with you to keep so that you have the ability to keep it straight. And then you also have that as a resource if you ever want to create another layout like this. Once you're happy with the placement of all of the different elements and you like where they are, go ahead, grab your tape runner and place them all down as straight as you can make them. Uh, this type of a page design does work best when we use kind of straight lines. And um, 
keep everything pretty level. Again, the idea of having a set of photographs or elements all collaged together on a wall. So I'm gonna go through across the whole page. I'm gonna get all of these elements right into place. If at any time you feel like you are falling behind, just hit pause. This is a recorded video. You can always hit pause. You can rewind. Um, I know that I am a, a very slow scrapbooker, so you might be moving faster than me. And if so, feel free to speed me up. I will not be offended. Once all the elements are in place, you can just snip off whatever is overhanging from that slimline die. And I'm showing you um, that kind of gives us a really nice place to add the journaling right there. I'm going to make you draw again. Yes, I am. So take a, that gel pen and we're just going to draw almost like a half circle across the top of all all of these elements except for our journaling spot and again you can thicken these up make them thinner if you want we want all of these little elements to look like they're hanging from our page so i'm just going to go around and uh, some of them i drew little half circles some of them if i felt like it would look better I drew like a little triangle above it. Um, you could also, when you're moving things around, um, you know, you know you're going to add these little doodled lines or edges here. So you want to kind of make sure uh, that you give yourself a little bit of headspace above. It doesn't have to be too much at all. I mean, it's not a lot of headspace, but just a little headspace above these different elements so that you can draw your little doodle lines. In the middle of each of those doodle lines, I'm gonna put a little drop of Nuvo glue and then I'm going to put a crystal right there. So the crystals are kind of acting like our nails on our wall. I am going to doodle some more. I'm going to doodle little, um, the little like bows and have those crystals be the middle of my bow, but not yet. I want that glue to dry. I want those gems to dry before I come in with my pen again, or that will be just messy, just messy disaster. And you can totally eyeball this. Uh, it doesn't have to be completely, totally 1000% centered. Uh, just as close as you can, as close as you can get it. Uh, totally to your discretion. And if you decide you just don't like the, the way that it looks with the little, I mean, what's kind of nice is because you're watching a video, you can see how it's going to look. And if at the end of the day, you're like, eh, I don't know if I like that or not. You could forego this. I, I like, again, I am a detail oriented person so if I'm making something that is a gallery wall and I'm I'm wanting to hang things and, and give it that look I definitely want to have the little threads and the little strings and the little bows and, and all those little details to kind of continue with my page theme Set your layout aside so that the glue can dry on those little gems. And now we're going to play with all of these flowers. So I'm going to ink each of the flowers up. And I'm only inking them up a little bit. Now, if you like, if you want to have very vibrant flowers, you could die cut all of these flowers from um, pattern paper. You could also really ink them, right? You could really, really color them up and make them more solid. I'm gonna be placing these flowers on, in the center of these panels, all those pattern paper squares and circles. So I want them to have some color, but I don't want them to have a lot of color. 
I want them to be m more of dimension, interest. I don't want them to be screaming. <laughs> I want them to be whispering. So in order to get that look, I am taking three Distress Oxide colors, Tumbled Glass, Saltwater, Taffy, and Squeeze Lemonade. I am inking all the layers of the flower up, but I'm only inking them up around the edges. I'm also showing you here that the on the back of the wreath package, it shows you exactly how to layer up all of these flowers. So you shouldn't have any trouble with them. I'm coloring them all in white. I'm inking them up just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue the layers on top of each other. Very, very simply. Uh, if you are someone who really enjoys coloring and you want to really color these flowers up, by all means, go ahead and color them up. I did another uh, layout using this kit a little bit back and I went ahead and used uh, a heavier hand with the ink and really colored them up. I also colored some of the layers with um, you could cut them with pattern paper. Like there's lots of ways you can do it. I, I really wanted this these flowers to have a softer, more kind of, I, I don't wanna say sculpt, sculptural, is that a word? Maybe sorta of, kind of look to them. Um, and so I went ahead with this technique instead. I kept a baby wipe on my table off to the side, just out of camera range. And in between the colors, I am wiping up my glass mat so that the colors don't mix. I don't want purple flowers and I don't want muddy flowers. So I'm just taking Baby Wipe and kind of swiping all the ink off my glass mat between the colors. You can see here just catching those edges, leaving a lot of white space. So you do have some color, but it is not a large amount of color. Um, and... If I had a patterned paper 12 by 12 background, I will say this. If my background had been a pattern 12 by 12 piece of paper, uh, I would have gone all white. I wouldn't have added any color to these flowers. But because I have white in my background and I know I didn't want to lose, I didn't want to lose I, I didn't want them to blend in. I don't know how to word this. I didn't want this page to look boring. I wanted a little more color. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little more color to the flowers. And then I'm just gluing the layers all together following that um, the back of that die set for help where I needed it. The squeezed lemonade ink that I chose I think was very bright. So when I do those, you'll see me kind of even use a lighter hand uh, on them. And again, if you don't like the patterns that I chose or that I used, use whatever patterns you like. Because I was doing this old heritage photo, I wanted to do very the more muted, almost darker uh, looking colors. There were uh, some patterns that kind of looked Victorian to me. I don't know if, if, if that's <laughs> what they were going through for, but I thought that they worked really, really well with my photograph. Workshop, I had everyone just die cut one of each style of flower from the wreath die set. You could certainly cut more um, and have flowers that are more clustered together. You could make larger clusters of flowers in each of these open spaces. I did want to make sure that my workshop did not go over time, especially since I was the first workshop. Uh, so I needed to be mindful of my time and how much time I had. And I also needed to make sure that anything I completed for the workshop, you could complete right along with me and work right along with me. So feel free to go ahead, die cut more of these flowers, and uh, you could make flower clusters instead of just using the one 
flower on each of the elements, which is what I'm going to end up doing for my layout today. Do the a larger flower and then come in with some of these smaller flowers, kind of tuck them up behind. I'm gonna pop all of these flowers up using foam tape so that could be definitely you would have the room underneath the flowers. Some of these smaller ones, probably I could have used my crystal katana to kind of get the smaller pieces. But again, I am a very kind of tactile person and I tend to want to get in there with my fingers. Um, if you like to use uh, reverse tweezers or uh, those types of, of tools, feel free. Like if you're very comfortable with them, I'm terrible with my reverse tweezers, but that's not the same for everybody. This is our last flower we can pull together here and then we can start to decide where we want them to go on our layout. I'm also going to go ahead and grab the Pink Fresh Studio die cuts that were part of the kit. They were like a little extra gift. We're going to use uh, quite a few of those. I think I used four. And we're going to talk about placement and why I chose to place them in the different areas that I did. So I'm going to go ahead and through here. And there are our flowers all done. I'm just going to wipe my desk off so we can kind of reset and pull all of this, these different elements together on our layout. Four of the die cuts from that Pink Fresh Studio die cut pack. I'm showing them to you here. Uh, there was one that I just knew I needed to add and it was silver. So once I had chosen one silver one, I went through and chose three more. Totally use gold if you like. Just choose a couple that speak to you, that support the journaling you wanna tell, that support the story that you wanna tell. Um, I have been researching my family history for a very long time and I have definite opinions about this couple so I had definite definite thoughts and ideas and things that if uh, especially my great great grandmother she was standing in front of me I there were sentiments and things I'd like to say and those sentiments are definitely in in the the wording the ch things that I chose um just as and that's what my journaling is going to be about my I have some very personal journaling that I want to add to this layout so I wasn't going to put the personal journaling like here on on uh camera but just a little bit of story if you follow my youtube channel you definitely have heard this story before um it was something I documented in my ancestry project but um my great great grandfather who is pictured in the photo uh, later on in life when my great great grandmother started menopo menopause he had her committed to an insane asylum uh, and it was a pretty notorious insane asylum and she was there for the rest of her life and she passed away in the in that insane asylum and in my um ancestry kind of mini book journal I have photographs of where where she stayed her like her inmate record and all of those things and so I definitely wish I one of the one of the things that I chose here that is on this page said wishing I could give you a great big hug right now and I feel that way every time I look at this picture um, my grandmother would always tell me just the kindest stories about her Grammy Plum that's what she called my uh, great great grandmother and so uh, I know that a lot of what happened to her later in life was not because she was mentally ill or um, you know and and they treated you terrible in the hospital that uh, my great great grandfather uh, had her committed to so 
I'm going to get all teary eyed. Let's not do that. Let's cut. So <laughs> I am matting three of these die cut elements onto black cardstock and I'm I'm doing it by eye because I just want a, a wee little mat on them. I don't want a huge mat on it. And uh, once I have that nice black mat there, I'm choosing different areas of my layout where I feel like I can put them. So these square kind of framed die cuts, by adding that black frame and then putting them on the layout, it kind of reinforces that gallery wall feel, right? And one, something in design that's really kind of um, popular are little sayings or little um, pieces of advice, you know, like live, laugh, love, or home sweet home. You know, those types of things are are very popular in home decor right now. So having those die cut elements that I could just add the black to and then kind of adding another layer to kind of reinforce that gallery wall feel to the layout I thought was just perfect. I'm coming in with my black gel pen and I'm adding those little strings now that the glue has dried. So right where those gems are. I'm just adding a little string so that it looks like um, my elements are kind of tied to my background. And now I'm showing you this. So here's another one of those little details that I absolutely, this is so subtle, but you guys, it adds so much to this layout, like so much. So what I have here is, it is a Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker. It is cool gray one, so it's a very light gray. All I'm doing is outlining these little frame pieces. I'm putting the brush right up against the edge of the paper and then just drawing around the edge. I'm I'm letting the marker do the work. What this does is it creates a shadow. So it's going to give the look of dimension without actual dimension. Uh, this is kind of like faux dimension, if you will. It's just going to cast this shadow around the outside edge of these frames. Again, just a detail, a beautiful, elegant detail to kind of continue with our idea that these elements are hanging on a wall. I'm just going over the outside edge one time. This is so light that you're not going to make a mistake. You're not going to get this wrong. <laughs> Even if the pen jumps, it's such a small detail. Uh, it definitely is noticeable, especially, uh, you know, if you see the photographs of my layout, the, um, the close-ups, you definitely can see that there's like, but it looks like a shadow. It's so, it's just, again, I love these little details. Now you can go ahead with your flowers. You're going to place one flower in the middle of each of these elements. Just choose the flowers that you like. Choose the flowers that you think go good with the pattern paper behind. You can also kind of think about size, placing the larger flowers in the larger circle areas and then the smaller flowers in the smaller squares. I am showing you here that that's where I'm gonna do my journaling, so I'm gonna keep that completely empty. And then once you're happy with the placement, you can start to adhere everything down. I'm going to adhere everything down with foam tape, so every one of these elements is going to have some dimension. I'm going to pop up all of the little die, you know, the die cut pieces. I'm going to pop up all of the flowers uh, just for some um, extra dimension. I'm using foam tape that I'm going to cut off a roll. Whatever you have that you like, feel free to use it. If you have foam tape on a big roll, if you have those little pop dots, 
type of foam tape, you can use those. It doesn't matter what kind of dimensional foam tape that you want to use. If you don't like the dimension, if you don't like dimension in your scrapbooks, if you want something you know, kind of flatter, first of all, get yourself a Tombow marker in cool gray one because that's gonna add shadow without any bulk at all. And <laughs> the other thing, I you could forego all of the foam tape and just adhere everything down where you want it. I love the look of Dimension. I love that it it just in this layout, which is very soft and calm. That's really you know we have the elegant and the pops of our black, but we also have this kind of soft, calm kind of color palette. I feel like that extra dimension adds a ton to the layout. So if you don't mind using it, if you don't mind having that little bit of extra bulk in your scrapbooks, by all means, add the foam tape. I am using Big Mama foam tape from Spiegel Mom Scraps. So it comes on a big roll. And then um, I have scissors that are Teflon coated so I can just cut whatever size strip of the foam tape that I need. And that way, um, because some of these flowers are delicate and small and um, I only need like a wee little bit of foam tape to adhere them down. For this little element that's kind of going off the edge of this frame, I placed it right, just right on top and then I'm gonna put the foam tape on the flower. You could do it the other way and have the flower kind of underneath this sentiment, uh, but you certainly would not need to. If you want to use the exact same die cut pieces that I used on my page, I chose only silver ones. And the four I chose said, take a deep breath, can't thank you enough. You were made for such a time as this and wishing I could give you a great big hug right now. So those were the four kind of sentiments when I was reading through that, um, I thought would support what I wanted to write about in my journaling. So I think I'm done right now, but actually I forgot to pop up two of those little die cut pieces. So if you give me like a second, I'm going to figure out that I forgot to put those little die cut pieces and then we're going to have to put them down. Here we go. And the last little element that I'm gonna add to my layout are more of the crystals. So around each of the flowers, I placed three crystals. I put these crystals in a triangle, so um, there might be two like in the upper left and then one at the bottom right area, just creating some clusters on those different areas for a little bit of sparkle, again, and I kept saying this over and over, a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of dimension, um, a little bit of like just a fun detail type of a thing. <laughs> um, those are kind of my, um, my words. Those are my words. Uh, we do simple, easy to put together, easy to use products, elegant, um, not necessarily fast. I'm not a fast scrapbooker. I love, you know, creating die cuts that have all these layers. I love coloring them. I love making my own kind of dimensional titles and doing those kinds of things. Uh, but I also really enjoy thinking through you know, my design. What what do I want my page to look like? How do I want it to feel? Do I want bright and bold? Um, do I want you to look at it and feel happy? Do I want you to look at it and feel kind of mellow like this layout? Definitely we wanted more mellow sort of a look and feel to it. Um, more muted colors, things like that. For these clusters on my page, I am using the smaller gems. So the pack of gems, this little little um, container of gems has three different sizes. There's like 
teeny tiny size and then there's a little bit bigger and then there's a little bit bigger and then there's a little bit bigger. I went with the smaller gems. Now when I did the card earlier, I went with the larger gems, but for this for for this page I wanted the smaller gems cuz I just wanted these to be little accents. Another really good idea if you have some uh, glossy accents and you know you like them, you know how to use them, have them in your stash, you could add a bit of a glossy accent center to the flowers or you could add uh, what would look like maybe little water droplets to the flowers. I think that would be really pretty and uh, really, really fun. If you're working from your stash, grab if you have some small sequins in place of the gems, you could use small sequins. You could use some Nouveau drops if you have a coordinating color. Um, if you have some gems that are just in your stash that match your papers you have chosen, you could use those gems as well. Definitely uh, lots of options for fun little sparkly things. I keep picking them up out of that container because I'm looking for the small ones. And then the small ones kept flipping over. So then I kept trying to like flip over these teeny, teeny, tiny, tiny gems. It was a little bit of a labor of love to get these the right size in the right spots in each of these places. <laughs> so take your time, finish up your layout, um, and just enjoy what you have created. So we have this bright, bold, fun card. Then we have this more mellow, calm layout. And both came from the same collection of products, the same retreat kit. Um, so you have lots and lots of options in this kit. I cannot stress enough how much I love this collection of products. The, both the kit and the add-on kit. The add-on kit is absolutely beautiful too, but I'm pretty sure I stuck to the main kit for both of my projects for my workshop. Um, I felt like that would just keep it pretty simple. Uh, but again, if you head over to my YouTube channel, you will find uh, that there are more projects using this kit. Uh, I have one that will be released after the... Um, workshop and that works that kit uses just the add-ons that's awesome too all right everyone have a wonderful day enjoy the rest of the workshops enjoy the rest of the inspiration i hope you've learned something that you can take away and i hope that you have a wonderful wonderful rest of the day happy national scrapbook day everyone and i will talk to you again soon bye Hey friends, it's Anessa here and I am so excited to have you join my class. 
I am having so much fun so far with the Crafty Meraki Scrapbooker Social. I loved Sarah's class and I can't wait to uh, watch the other instructors as well. So welcome back here and let's get started. So uh, we're going to work on two layouts today and I've kind of got an idea of what I want to do. I played around with what I have within the kits and have some thoughts on what we're going to play with. So before we do that, though, I wanted to show you uh, the product that we're going to be using and for the first layout. And then we'll work on the first layout and then we'll switch gears and work on the second one. So let's see. First up, I, I love the dies. I love metal dies. They're amazing. And the quality from Crafty Meraki is so good. So I was really excited to play with these. So um, for our first layout, our main kind of set of dies we're going to be using is the Effluent Heart one here. And uh, it's kind of, you can make stacked hearts. I love the various sizes. And then there's also um, a word die that says love you. So really perfect for what we're going to be doing here. And I will pick that up in a, in a bit here. So we're going to be working with that one. The other dice that we're going to be working with is a live like no other. And these are the pair dies and they work so well with the effortless, effortless artistry paper collection. So we're going to be using that and I picked out which um, sheet I'm going to be working with here. Um, and then the next set of dies we'll be working with is the wreath. I love this one. The florals are beautiful. Um, and I picked out one in particular. So I used all of these already on some, uh, some other layouts that if you haven't seen, they're up on all the social media as well as um, I think the announcements. Um, but we're going to use this just like as a little accent today for our layout. And then last but not least is this English Rose um, stencil set. And I love that you can build, build it with colors. However, for today, we're just going to be using the leaves. Okay? So make sure you get that handy. Uh, we also will be using um, these beautiful sparkle, sparkle uh, primrose blue. I love gems. So if, if you know me, or um, I use gems, bling, sequins, something literally glittery on almost every layout or project that I make. Um, and I go by paper and bling on my social media. So, you know, it fits. Um, so this, I love these gems. And then we're also going to be working with a couple, um, oops, a couple um, stamp pads so i've got distress oxide in shabby shutter and speckled egg now color wise you really if you don't have these handy or you have a different brand really anything will work and we're going to be working with brighter colors but i wanted these to be kind of more in the background so once you see uh what we're working with you can kind of pick um what you have in your stash and I think that's about it. Oh, except the main paper that we'll be working with is this paper pad. So this is the color Cascade pattern paper. It's beautiful. I love the double-sided papers in here. You have two of each pattern and they're just gorgeous and so fun. I love the bright colors. So we're gonna be working with this and I've already kind of picked my papers. So why don't I show you uh, which ones? So I've got this kind of stripe going on here. We have two sheets of this one, and you can see the back. We've got this one next, and then this sheet here. Now you can kind of go rogue and work with whichever papers speak to you. Um, you can change up the color combo as well. So before we get started, I kind of made a sample layout and we're going to, uh, it's not exactly it, but it's kind of the starting of it. So you can see I'm using a brighter 
um, brighter photo. My jacket is like bright fuchsia pink. So this worked really well, but you could also go with the more muted tones uh, within the paper collections, or you can do a different paper pad as well. So this is a type of layout, a wreath that you can make with virtually any collection with any pattern. Um, and it will look like a fabulous new layout every time. Um, so I love that about scrapbooking in general. So let me put these to the side and then we'll get started. So as we kind of work along, I do want to say I've, I'm going to pre-cut or I've pre-cut some of the die cuts already so that we're not spending that time die cutting things. Um, but the majority of it is going to be spent just building the layout. And then I'll kind of share the process of kind of how I think about making scrapbook layouts as well as tell you a little bit about myself um, for those of you that are not familiar with who I am. So um, let me go ahead and grab uh, those pieces and uh, we'll get going here. Bob. Okay then, so let me um, show you what I have cut already. So you can kind of get a sense for, for that. And then we'll get our space organized. Um, to get started. So for the hearts, I used, um, let's see how many sheets. We used one, two, three, four, five sheets to cut hearts, various sizes. So um, I'll just show you slowly kind of all the ones. This one I had to recut, obviously, because that got cut off. But um, thankfully, you have multiple sheets of the paper in the paper pad so that makes it easy I used this one used this one this one and then this one and I actually did the two at the top I used this side and the one on the back I used this side of the paper so um and, you know, in terms of if you want to make it exactly as I'm doing it, this will help you. Otherwise, just uh, pick the papers you want to use and um, just get enough variety of hearts cut out so that when, as we build the wreath, you have enough to work with. And you can always cut more, of course. And then for our sentiments, I cut out the love you from here and the spring wishes. So I love that these make it so easy to just bring the layout together. Okay. So I'm going to move these aside so that we have space to work here. And then we will get going. So as I was prepping for the class, I kind of started working with my pattern paper or my pattern paper my white card stock so if you have a texture card stock great if you have a smooth one that works as well I like a white background um and you know sometimes I I use pattern paper as well for my background but I don't know I like how clean it is so the other thing you want to kind of have handy is um, just a place a placeholder or something that you can use to trace a circle and it's really only to kind of guide how we build the wreath so in this case I used an eight inch circle that I just um, cut with my little uh, machine that I have you can do it with an electronic machine you can get a, a plate so if you have a plate that's about this size, um, that'll help as well. All these pencil marks will get hidden. So really it's just to give you an idea of where to place things. And then um, also for the stenciling piece, it helps as well. So once you get your template ready, you can just grab a pencil, trace it around, and then you have that um, all set and ready to go. 
Um, now for the inks, so I'm gonna start there and I've got my little um, ink tool things here. I forget what they're called, but my little foam um, tool here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my stencil and um, I kind of want to mix it up between shabby shutters and the speckled egg. And we're going to have the leaves kind of peeking out from the wreath. So there's not an exact science to it. It's I kind of do it by, you know, just eyeball it. Um, if you're a little bit more precise, um, you may want to kind of place the hearts around it and then get a set for where you want um, the leaves to go. I'm just going to wing it and um, kind of work work with where the placement is. So I've got that going and then I think I'm going to do one more maybe here. And before I do my next color, I need to wipe off the stencil. So I just use baby wipes. <clears throat> you can also use a um, just a damp paper towel. So whatever you have handy will work. Okay, we've got that. And then <clears throat> I'm gonna do this shabby shutters, which is like a light green. Almost of a, a mothy or mossy green, I would say. And let's see. Definitely, I think I want to stick with maybe one green leaf here. Now, when you're working with stencils, these are really easy uh, because there's a lot of white space, but just want to be careful you don't get it on the outside of your stencil. It happens to me all the time because I forget to mask it. Um, but the beautiful thing about these is white cardstock, you can always grab a new piece and, and redo it. So I'm kind of mixing it in between the, the blue. Mm, I think that's good, should be good. Okay. So I'm gonna clean that off. And put it to the side and let's get these out of the way so a little bit about myself um so i'm Vanessa persikian and on social media i go by paper and bling i've been scrapbooking and crafting for over 20 years at this point i can't believe it's been that long but it has been um so yeah, I, I've been doing this for a long time, since I was probably 16. And my first um, project was a baby album for my then boyfriend, who's my husband. Um, so we've been married for a long time. We have three kids. And um, I really love scrapbooking because it allows me to document a lot of our family memories and our trips and vacations and also the everyday moments. Um, and I also love the artistic aspect of it. So, you know, as long as I can remember, I've loved art. I always was doodling or coloring or um, took art classes during school. So always have loved that aspect of it and um, just love mixing it all together. So, and um, probably the last three years, I would say, I've really enjoyed teaching others as well. So, um, so I'm glad, glad to be here and share a little bit of my, my process with you. So I think we're ready to kind of build the wreath. Now, as um, you work this, a couple kind of tips. Um, before you glue anything, I like to kind of build it out, especially with a wreath. And you can build a wreath with anything. So today I'm gonna to be working with hearts, but you can obviously do this with flowers, with leaves, um, with 
stars and other shapes. So it's really versatile and you can get a lot of, um, a lot of different layouts and projects out of it. Um, I also, with mini albums, I like doing wreath as well. Um, you can do that on the cover or just one of the inside pages. So really fun. So I'm just bending with my finger slightly here. Um, I like doing this because it gives it just a little bit more dimension. Um, and it's going to look like the hearts are kind of floating off the page a bit. So lots of hearts here. And once we have that ready, then we'll start laying it on. So, all right, so our hearts are ready. We're not gonna do the glued yet, but I'm gonna start kind of laying out um, how I want them to be placed. And I do like starting with the largest ones first, just so that it, you know, kind of starts getting the spacing the way I want it. And then we'll continue to play with it. Oh, let's see, Maybe something like that. I like this one here. So I'm kind of using my template that I had made and will work, you know, we'll kind of work with it once I get everything down. Uh, I do want a little bit more, maybe a yellow there. Let's see. I want to see if I have more striped, maybe this one. Put that one there. That. This is a pretty one. Oh, it's fallen. Oh, uh, do do do. And let's see, it's a beautiful day outside by me. Lots of kids playing out there, which is nice to hear them all. Probably do something like that. blue there and a pop of pink kind of more pink here let's see let's see uh, this is too big so we'll do this one i want that one there maybe some more blue let's see a blue like that looks good so I have more hearts than I need, but I think I'm gonna layer some up too. So we'll, we'll work that in. And then for my photos, before I, I adhere the cards, I do wanna kind of place my photos down. So maybe something like that. Can't go wrong with pink and purple, right? Oh, I really like how this is turning out. So I think I'll start adhering and then we'll add more layers to it. So I love dimensional layouts. I love working with layers. Um, I think it just gives more interest to it. Um, and it didn't always used to be that way. I used to kind of refrain from that just because I was worried about the thicknesses of my albums, but I don't know. I think the last like four years I've gotten over that. <laughs> and, I, and I just like the dimension because I just like how it looks. So and it gives more shadows. So that, you know, all right, so we'll do that one there. And then I need some more adhesive here. Okay. 
Not, I like this thick one, but use whatever you have. We'll do something here like that. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and kind of mix, mix, mix. And I do want to add some flowers around these two, so we'll do that piece. Okay. There you go. So in the comments, let me know um, if you're working along with me or if you're kind of just watching. Um, would love to, to learn that. And then um, I'll stay curious where everyone's from. So if you don't mind sharing, I would love to know. Um, I'm in Illinois, so... Definitely part of the windy city, um, although I'm in the suburbs, but it's pretty windy here today. Even though it's a, it's nice weather, so. Okay, and excuse the noise a little bit. Um, so I've got family home and my craft room. It's right next to the kitchen with no doors, so sometimes you'll hear you'll hear some noise. Couldn't kick them all out today. Alright. And I'm curious, um are you planning to do other challenges or events for International Scrapbook Day. I know I've got a cup a couple actually that have gone live today and I'll need to check in on those. Um, but I love all the ideas and inspiration that comes this time of year. It definitely sets you up for some some fun the rest of the year. And I know for me, it can get a little overwhelming just because there's so much. Um, but, you know, I think it, these are ideas you can do anytime. So that's the best part about it is you can always go back and kind of utilize the ideas and for your scrapbooking throughout the year. So we're getting pretty close here. I'm liking it so far. I do want to put more, more hearts kind of in spaces that look a little too empty for me. And then I might layer some as well. I'm going to layer the blue here. something like that. Mm. Yeah, I like that. We'll bring in more of the stripe. That way it looks like more, more like a heart than what it looks like right now. <laughs> um, okay, so I think that's good. Maybe as I say that, I'm like, no, let's add more. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you just see a spot and you're like, I need to cover that up. Okay, so I think that's good. I'm happy with that right now. Now, let's add our sentiments. Um, so that I love you. Where do I want to put you? And then spring wishes. So this is actually from Easter weekend. So 
I wanted to to do something like that and then I want to do the I love you something like that okay so we'll do the spring wishes here and then maybe 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 here i don't know i have a just elsewhere but i kind of layered these hearts differently so i feel like that's too far out if i put it there i don't know i think we're gonna leave it on the little one then so we'll do that and let's see what else do I want to do. I think the hearts are good to go. We're going to, um, we are going to put the flowers now. So I have a couple here. I think I want more though. Uh, let me just grab some more. In a variety of colors. I've got some flower centers. We'll see if we end up using these or not. Because um, I want to put the sequins. So, not sure about these pieces yet. But for the flowers, let's make that work. So, we got that there. I kind of want more green here, maybe. And that's fun. Put a little orange here. So, I'm trying to. Uh, balance out the colors so I've got a lot of green here so I'm trying to put the green there um, so that's really my my thought there is how to kind of shift your eye so that the colors um, your eye moves around the, the page Let's see do I want a flower there I know I want one there and then I feel like something like that. You know, I'm not gonna leave. I think I'm gonna leave it like that. Okay. I don't want to overwhelm it. So a little bit of dab, a little glue. And you can go ahead and adhere it. And I just do the centers. Again, I like things to to have dimension, so I just let it float. float. Okay. And then one other thing, so <clears throat> title-wise, if you have um, letter stickers or alphabet stickers, you can add a bigger title as well. Um, you can add some journaling. Um, but like maybe in a heart or around the heart. So you can tell a bit of the story behind the photos. I'm not going to do that um, live right now, but it is something that I will add um, when I'm ready. And then I might add these, but let's see. Yeah, why not? It looks pretty. So we'll add that. And then I'm kind of going to alternate or mix up the colors just to complement here and here. I'll probably do a little bit of the green here. And then the orange there. Alrighty. So that's great. And then we're gonna work with the sequence. So I need to grab my little, have a little wax tip pen or tool, tool I guess you would call it. So apologies, but let me grab that and a sip of water. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> and I think, so I made other layouts and I've used the bigger pieces already. So we'll, we'll just work with what's in here available. And I just put a little dab of glue. I love that it dries clear, so I don't have to worry about, you know, if I've got too much on there or not. But I just love, love a little glitter. Okay, so I've got that going there. And this puppy there. And then one more. And then I think what else would be fun to add is just little little um, sprinkles around there. Ooh, this one's being uncooperative. So I'm just going to kind of place it and then go back in and adhere. I like doing that with, with these pieces. That way you're not committing just yet. And I'm gonna keep them around the flowers. There's little specks here. Let's see, over here, one there. Okay. Well, this guy doesn't wanna work with me either. Okay, you're going back in the pot. start gluing that way I, I know what I want to do here so I'll just make it a little bit easier Ooh. I took it off with my finger okay that's good and what I was doing for a second there. And you kind of watch this come to life, right? I I bet you, you're like, yes. The sparkle is everything, right? I love the sparkle. Okay. try to do four here. Hopefully you guys are not seeing my hair on the screen. I apologize if you are. I'm trying not to get into the frame, but sometimes it's hard. drowning in the glue. You know what? Let's put a different one on. That way he's not drowning. Okay. So let's see. I think we're looking good here. Um, Everything's on there. There you go. So let me kind of get close here. So you can see all that. I love how it turned out. Um, I hope you give this a try. And let me kind of pause, clean up the space real quick, and get a setup for the next layout. And I will see you in just a second here. And okay, so we are back for layout number two. And with this layout, we're actually going to work with a grid. It's one of my favorite layouts. You can create, again, use this design for so many different layouts. And um, you can also get lots of photos on there as well. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different with it today, but it is one of my favorite ones when I wanna get just multiple photos on a page. So 
let's see. Uh, with that said, we're going to work with a couple sets here. So the Emperor Wings uh, Paradise um, are just so beautiful. I love the butterfly. So I cut out my paper already, but we're going to be working with this nice, beautiful butterfly. And it is trimmed from these two sheets. That's part of um, the color cascade pattern paper pack that we just worked with. I'm gonna put that aside. And then we will also be working with uh, this leaf, laurel leaf die set. And for that one, I used a smaller leaf and I cut it out of this soft green from for the Love of Flowers collection. And then this one, I haven't cut anything yet, so we'll, we'll see if we add that in. Uh, but then from this um, Artisan Floral Dye Wreath set, I used the two large leaves and cut it from the yellow paper here so you can see what these look like. So these are ready, then these are cut from uh, the sentiment um, pad that we worked with earlier. And then I'm also working with um, this plaid pattern paper. I love this, like perfect for Easter, but spring in general, just really pretty colors. And we're working with the plaid, so, or the grids, I should say. And all the colors you want one of each so with that said let's grab a white sheet of cardstock and let me just make sure that you can see it on the screen here in full perfect and then from that paper I cut my little squares these are sized three by three and because this is a layout I do pretty frequently, I kind of already know what the um, spacing needs to be like. But I will share that with you. So I'm kind of eyeballing it right now because I want to get, get this down in case I want to change the order of the patterns. And then my photo I matted on the back of this green one. So I have a three by three photo and I just um, matted it. Just a thin border around. So I'm trying to decide if I wanna, how I wanna have this. We'll see, we'll see, we might move that around, okay? And then I've got these pieces trimmed. So these tulips are beautiful. I love the coloring on them. So, and I kind of want it to hug around my photo. So the photo is the star of the show. So I want to kind of hug it like that. And then I want to add some leaves here. So I think I'm gonna move the yellow just because I wanna have some yellow up here. Maybe here and have the blue here. That works. So we'll layer it like that. And then we have the yellow leaves that we trimmed as well so I think that will go like that maybe not sure that works and then we've got the butterfly so why don't we glue that together so it's ready to go for us I didn't pop out all the pieces yet but Not too many. Okay, so 
So I'm going to start layering this. Just like a little bit of a dab of glue so it holds well. Do, do, do. All right. And then I think this one's centered pretty much. So I like that the glue kind of lets you work work with it for a bit before it sets. Otherwise, that would be a little challenging. So that's good. And then I'm going to do this one. All right, so it's pretty quiet for now, although I hear some vacuuming happening. Hopefully you don't hear that on the video. If you do, I apologize. Okay, so I'm gonna layer that like that. Just have that set. Doo -doo. So that looks good. And then we'll add the body. What a pretty butterfly. I love it. You can totally do like a repeating pattern with these butterflies too. So cute. And I think I'm going to put that in the center like that. Okay, so uh, let's kind of lay this out and um, position it well. So I'm going to take these off now that we know what we're doing there. This can go on the side. And I'm just going to put adhesive on the back of all the squares before we glue them down and do assembly style. So who here scrapbooks? I'm curious, are are there a lot of scrapbookers or more card makers? Um, would love to hear from you. Pop it in the chat. Okay. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mark it before I'd hear my first one just so I have an idea where and then I can easily erase that. That's an inch way it's sticking to me. And that's an inch. Okay. So we'll put the first one down. And I want to make sure it's straight. And then in between, we're going to do half an inch. So that will be good spacing. And that. Okay. Then sure as I have half an inch. About half an inch here. So that's a little bit more. Okay. And, ooh. I don't know if that 
that's where I wanted that one. Let's see. Probably not. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Whew. Almost put the wrong colors next to each other. Well, I guess nothing's wrong, but it just not the the balance that I would want. here so I guess like that yeah. okay. and then last but not least we'll go here So this one's got a little bit extra on the bottom, but that's okay. It's no big deal. So let me kind of position this, just make sure you guys can see the screen. Okay, that's good. All right, so that's good there. And then what else do I want to do? I'm going to put adhesive on the back of my photo. hold off on adhering it until I get this placed the way I want it. And I think for these leaves, I do want to bend them. If you have a little tool, you can use that as well. I just use my fingers because it's faster <laughs> than using a tool. These already have the cuts. So just gently kind of fold it in. So it doesn't look so flat. And then these need a little bit of shaping here. Different type of leaf, but it works. Okay. Let's see. So. I want this hugging around the photo. So look at that. And then we'll do that here as well. But just opposite placement, I would say. Even the butterfly. Okay. Like that. Mm, can't decide if I want it there or higher. Yeah, probably like that. Okay. So I'm going to get this on there first. And then we'll do the leaves. And sometimes this is where at this stage I might end up trimming some of the leaves just depending on how it's looking. So don't be afraid to do that. So I don't glue them down all the way. Just a couple dabs here and there to make sure it stays. This one's pretty thin, so you know, if you'll uh, you want to be gentle with it so it doesn't rip. I know I did that. I was um, trying to pick it off the, the cutting mat and ended up tearing, tearing it a bit. But 
least it's easy enough to cut a new one. So let's see, probably here. Okay, and then this one will connect it. I'm going to do a little bit of hand stitching on this as well. Um, I want to bring in more texture to the layout. So if you have thread, um, you can grab what you have, try to work with the colors, but um, I'm going to use probably a little bit more of an orange one. just to bring in um, some orange up here, I think. Okay, that's good. And then this one, we'll make it, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Kind of do that. That's looking good. <coughs> and we're gonna fluff up the butterfly a little bit. And by fluffing, I mean do this so it looks like it's fluttering off the page. So just carefully bend up the wings. And I'm making it a little bit crooked because I think it looks a little bit better and just more, more whimsical. Okay, that's good. And then I need to get my foam pad. So I forgot to get that ready, but here it is. So we'll take the foam pad and then I have a little tool, pokey tool that we'll use. <clears throat> Let's see. So that's good. There we go. And I think I'm going to use this thread just because it matches pretty well with the tulips. And I'm going to make a couple stitches in a few places. So I think I'll do some maybe here, some stitches there. I want to do stitching here and then we'll see maybe up here, but I want to get this first. So I'm going to eyeball it. I want three crosses or three X's. So let's see one. Two, three. Okay, that should be good. And if not, we'll make more. All right, so go ahead and grab your thread. You don't have to have the exact same colors I do. Um, I'm only doing that because of the tulips, because they're a little bit darker than the papers I'm working with, I think it just looks look a little bit better, but I think there's other colors that will work as well. So I got my needle here. And this is a part you can also skip. So if you're not into hand stitching, no worries. You can add other pieces, add a title, add some um, journaling, it'll look great. Okay, man, I hear that wind howling over here by me. Crazy. I'm 
I'm so ready for warmer weather though. I don't know about you, but summer is uh, taking too long. We can, I love spring. We can s skip right over it if we need to and go straight to summer, I'd be happy. Doo -doo -doo. Gotta be careful with the leaves that they don't get damaged in the process. Um, and then we'll tie this together. do four again. So one, two, three, four. Do to do, do. Crisscross applesauce. <laughs> I don't know why that got in my head, but this is what it reminds me of. silly sometimes. All right, here's my next question. How many of you follow uh, Vicky Boone's lives? I actually did hers recently and it was fun. I love hearing her. And I just did an event with her in Texas. That was a lot of fun, her and Paige. Okay. And I'm not one more time and I'm gonna see where else I wanna. So, maybe up here, yeah. Sounds like the right place for that. Do one, two, three, four again. All right, and I think my boys will be coming inside making all sorts of noise, so apologies if you hear that. Hopefully no one's slamming the door. looking so I didn't and I, I will need to add a title I haven't thought about that yet um, so I'll have to go through my collection of thickers probably and add one in but I think for the last piece for now I'm gonna add my little gems so again we'll sprinkle these all around Hopefully these cooperate with me today, right now. Let's see. That's good. 
want an itty bitty one here. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, so we'll do that. Ooh, look at me working left handed. Okay. So that should be on. I'm just pushing them down to make sure it's in the adhesive. Okay. And then we'll add some here. Oops, sorry. Hopefully you guys are not, I'm not getting my hair in there in the view. And then I forget to talk when I do these because I'm just like so concentrating <laughs> sometimes. I don't know about you. Okay. Oh, I like that. It's pretty. Very, very pretty. All right. So I think my layup is done for now. Um, I might add a title and some journaling. If anything, it might be just like maybe a little small tighter title here. Um, I don't mind the sort of quote unquote white space here. Um, I think that's fine. So we'll see. Um, but I hope you enjoyed um, my session here today. And um, if you've got any questions for me, put them in the chat. I'll be sure to go back in and answer them. And I really appreciate you taking the time. I hope you've learned something new. And um, if you haven't scrapbooked before, time to give it a try. So have a fabulous day and um, can't wait to watch um, our other instructors and learn from them as well. So thank you so much. Have a good one.